about these monsters within, and to me, the monster is the pain body. And I want to explain the term pain body according to Eckhart Tolle, because we all have these pain bodies in us. A pain body is this. It's like an um, energy field that attaches itself to us, right? And it's, it comes from this emotional residue that we've never healed. So it's, it's kind of followed us our whole life when we have these pains and these emotional you know, wounds through our life when we don't deal with them, they just settle. They settle in our system and they create this energy field. And there's a collective pain body for the world, for countries, and there's a pain body for you too. And those to me are the monster within. And when they get triggered and activated, they take over. But now what, what uh, I think Judy was right when she said, they said they have a voracious appetite. That's what he says. It's like this being that has this appetite for suffering. So when we have this pain body attack, you know, something happens in our life and we're mad about it, you know, we, usually we can just get over it. But if it attacks the pain body, all of a sudden, you know, we're so angry that it takes us over. We're angry at everybody and everything. And the monster comes out at us. You can almost see when you're dealing with people that have, are having pain body attacks because they're so mad about this and they're so mad about that and it doesn't even make sense that they're that upset. That's what the pain body is, does that make sense? That, and that's what attacks us when we you know, get into that field, that, that whole field. And our job is to catch that before it takes over, is to be able to, to say, uh-oh, I feel it coming on, to be able to get present enough to know and present enough to be able to have compassion for ourselves and our wounds, to be able to open our heart enough to be able to, to embrace that pain or the, the pain that we have and not let it turn into this pain body entity. You know, and when we are able to cultivate that capacity, our life changes. Our life changes completely. I think that, you know, at one time or another, and I, I thought about this a lot, what is it that, that uh, triggers those pain, uh, those pain bodies in us? And it's, it's kind of different for everybody, but I found that for men, it seems to be about being disrespected. Now think about this in your life. If they feel disrespected, for women, and it can be women too, but for women it's about betrayal. They felt betrayed. You know, the minute that they feel betrayed, you know, it's, it jumps into all of the history of being betrayed. And I, and I was thinking about that, especially in my life. You know, I saw a, a, there was a time when, I don't know, it was a few years, well, it's a bit a while back, when there was a political figure that I happened to see that um, it was prominent at the time. And he ended up having a baby out of wedlock with, you know, with somebody. And I can remember it going, oh, and I just had all of this feeling about him. It was so out of the norm for how I usually feel. And it was a pain body attack because that had happened to me, right? So it was this unhealed stuff that I was going through. And then it, it did this pain body thing. And so our job now is to be able to step back for a minute and say, wow, I'm getting triggered. You know, I'm feeling triggered. What is that? And then stop for a minute, breathe, and then bring our compassion to it. Did that air kick on? No? It's going to take it Okay. All right. It'll come on when I'm, when I'm done here. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, we either do two things, I think, when um, we are triggered by something in your life, you know. We e either try to bury it and pretend, you know, that it didn't happen. I've done that forever, you know. It's just it kind of boiling inside. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. You know, it's okay. You know, I can do that. And it, you know, it'll go away. It'll go away. Or you become this wounded person, this hateful person that is so bitter, you know, about life. So you, you, you handle it two ways. And what Marianne Williamson says, and I, I think she's amazing, she says that we create this hole in us. And that hole within us is a loss of our essence, the loss of the perfection that we really are. The truth is you can never lose who you are, never. Who you are is this beautiful, incredible soul, but you can think you lost it. And that's the hole. And what we do is then we fill the hole in us. We fill it with alcohol, or we fill it with, with um, chocolate, you know? We, 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 we fill it with sex, you know? That's not why it could be something, you know? <laughs> TMI. But you know, the truth is that we fill this hole because there's this gap in us. Instead of getting present and giving compassion, you know, to ourselves, we're trying to just fill our hole so that we feel so complete. When the truth is we are complete and beautiful and loving, we are that and we have to remember to bring compassion. 
but we don't bring compassion to what's going on in our life. I didn't bring compassion to my ex-husband right away, it took a while, because it hurt. I had to face my hurt to bring the compassion. I feel the air, the yes. yellow. <laughs> okay. so, so if you can't hear me, though, yell and I'll, I'll yell louder. But, but the truth is that compassion is medicinal. It, it heals us. That's what it does. That's, that's a benefit of being present and compassionate with your own pain and with that of somebody else. You know, we become different kind of people. You know, when we do that, we can go beyond our own pain into our own compassion. When we feel what's going on. So when you're hurt, you've got to really feel it. I say that. I harp on it a lot when you guys are going through anything. When I'm going through something. To feel it till you can come through the other side of it. To feel the compassion in the presence. So whatever's going on in your life, you know, let it move through you. Let it be healed by you. By the power in you. You know, um, the truth is that when we are in this uh, attack, this pain attack, and get too far into it, we can't get out of it. You know, we can't get out of it unless we, we make the conscious effort. We can talk to people and they can help us through it, but until we make the conscious effort that we don't want to be in pain, until we decide that we want to be happy, until we realize who we really are. And that's the whole crux of this whole, you know, everything that, that life is, is remembering who you are, the truth of who you are. That when we do that, the moment that we realize that we are this loving, beautiful being, we build a shield around us of love. We build this, maybe it's not a shield, that sounds like protection, but it, we build a field, an energy field of love that, that even the pain body can't attack, you know? And the moment we sink back in to those negative thoughts, you know, and that, that those anger issues and things, then it activates that again, you know? And how do we do that? You know, what activates that in us? And I got to thinking, you know what it is? It's dwelling obsessively about how wrong you were. It's about creating this big story about what's going on in your life, thinking that you're the righteous one. I remember when I went through my painful divorce, it was all about, I was the righteous one, this shouldn't have happened. And the story became more important, right, than healing. And I had to feel it, but boy, did I talk to everybody about it. It took me years. You know, everybody, their brother, probably back them off, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm done. I'm done with it, you know. But you turn your pain, see, to this ongoing drama of life, you know. And then another thing we do is we seek out those who can agree with you. And yeah, you're right, you were wrong, you know. So we all hang out together, all of the people that, you know, in that energy field. And they build your pain body. Because they're saying, hey, you know, you're right, you were wrong, you, you know, you're right to feel this way. Instead of getting with a conscious person that says, wake up, you know, wake up. You know, Judy and I will wake up each other and say, this ain't about the other person, it's about you, right? It's about how you are handling it, and that's so important. What we have to realize, and this is, you know, what I want to spend the next two, two or three minutes talking about, is that spirit, God, the universe has our back. It has our back, you guys. It's a good universe. It's, it's beautiful and it's programmed for your benefit. I really, really, really believe that. I'm reading a book now called The Law of Divine Compensation and Marianne Williamson. And she talks about how this universe is programmed to, to be for our benefit. That everything that happens is for a reason. You know, that we only get better. That everything is programmed for a higher order. You know, that the acorn becomes the beautiful oak tree. That an embryo becomes this beautiful baby. You know, that a little bud becomes a blossom. You become a beautiful and more wonderful person. It's just that they don't block it and we do. We block our good. We block it with those negative thoughts and block it with the pain body that's going on. We activate that spirit field with every loving thought we have. Every loving thought we have, we can activate God's presence. Activate the universe in our benefit. You know, when we give more credence, she says, to the reality and the power of love than to the material world, why everything changes for us. You know, here's what, I, here's what she says, and I love it. She says, if our circumstances tempt us to think thoughts such as, I'm not good enough, you know, I'm a hater, you know, this, uh, it, I hate whoever is the blame for this, then miracles are programmed into the nature of the universe cannot make their way into our awareness. See, there's miracles out there waiting for each one of us if we're open to them, right? If we're in that energy field of love, the miracles come. But if we're shut down by all the pain body of our life, we're not gonna feel the miracles happening. You know, with, she says, with every thought that we think, we either summon or we block a miracle. 
So think in your life right now what's going on. Are you, are you summoning the miracles of your life? Or are you blocking them? Are you blocking them? We have to open our heart and align with the presence of this universe because the universe has our back. The universe has our back. Spirit's got our back. You know, and, and she talks about, and I, I've been, this is always, I, I didn't get this until probably last night, <laughs> about this, okay? We've always talked about the, the, the law of, um, of, the, of attraction, right? The law of attraction. And I've always bought it. I bought the law of attraction. I believe that you have a, a, a way to be able to mind create. And I know that I've done it in my life, you know? I, I, wanna, I want this in my life, and it'll manifest. But then I find out it's not exactly what I wanted. And so I got what she said. Right? I, I got what she said. She says, the law of attraction um, says that if you use your mind in a certain way, that the material results are going to follow. And that's true. It's a mental law. But it's not a spiritual law. With your mind, you can affect certain things. But when your mind is used to enforce your own will rather than to simply love, then you're doing what A Course in Miracles is called magic. Magic is where I tell the universe what I want it to do for me. But a miracle is where I ask the universe what it wants from me. Right? Don't you love that? Well, you, God, show me. What do you want? How do I, who do I need today for my good? That's what the universe does. It tells you what to do. You know, the, she says the law of, attraction is, is, law of attraction is wonderful because it shows us that we have the power, mental power, to do things. But we've got to go beyond that. We've got to rest in God. We gotta rest in this universe, in this biggerness than the biggerness. Did I say biggerness? <laughs> we gotta rest in bigness, right? In this big thing, this big thing called God, you know? And that's only the beginning, you guys, of an empowered life, you know? The mental powers can do so much, but boy, the power of God in our life changes who we are and changes every single moment of our life. And that's my prayer for each one of us, besides that air conditioner. <laughs> that we have so much love, that we, we fill our hearts with love, we fill our hearts with compassion, and that we transform any of those pain bodies